everyone, it's Courtney with the Colorado Wolf and Wildlife Center, and today I'm in here with our little girl, Coda. Coda is an eight-year-old timber wolf, and she is alone right now because both of her mates unfortunately passed away, one in June and the other one in September. Now, a lot of you might have remembered us posting on Facebook back in the summer when Wakanda passed away. That was Coda's original mate, and then his brother Shunka, who passed away, of course, on 9-11. So Coda is a little bit of a lone wolf right now, and of course she is a little depressed and mourning her losses. There you go, Coda. She is very, very food motivated, though. We're hoping to get her a high content wolf dog or another wolf to become her mate or what we like to say, boy, hi sweetie, boyfriend or girlfriend, you know, have that in here, hopefully in the spring before summer. We just don't like to see our wolves alone for too long. Of course, it's just like people when you're alone too long, it doesn't do really anything positive to your emotions and your mental state of mind. But for right now, we spend time with Coda just like we are today. So we thought it would be really nice to see her in her wolf blog. You can see, even though Coda is a little bit of a petite wolf, her feet are absolutely huge huge really good example of even though your wolves don't have a lot of weight on them they definitely have huge feet to uh, help them hunt so go to like I said very cute little girl good example of an average female wolf now what we are going to talk about today is a bill that is going through both the Senate and the House now this bill in the House it's going to be called HR 424 and in the Senate or excuse me that's in the Senate and in the House it's going to be called S 164 now, unfortunately, because it's in both of the chambers right now, it is, has a higher chance of getting passed. So what we want to do is spread as much awareness about it before it gets the chance to get onto President Trump's desk. And, um, you know, you never know if he would sign yes or no on that. But if both of the Senate and the House pass it, most likely he would. So what we're going to, like I say, talk about is what this bill means for wolves and what it's stating. So as of right now, this bill would be affecting Wyoming, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Minnesota. Now, these states would be allowed to immediately start trophy hunting and controlling their wolf population. The worst part about this bill is that <laughs> <laughs> the worst part about this bill is that once it is passed, you will not be able to have any judicial review on it. You will not be able to fight it in any way. No resident once it's passed will be able to say we don't agree with this. We want it to change. And that's why it's really really important that we're stopping this before it even gets further into the chambers. So again, what it's going to do is cause trophy hunting to happen. And what that means for Wyoming, especially Wyoming, is that even though your Yellowstone areas are going to be protected still, they're going to be able to be hunting wolves at, by any means, by any methods, in any number, in 90% of the state without a license. Now, when you near Yellowstone, that 10% is where you're going to have to have a license. So yes, potentially this could be harming your Yellowstone wolves and be causing them to get a decrease in number. Not only that, but <laughs> what it is also stating is that they'll only have to be maintaining 100 wolves and 10 breeding pairs. That is much, much less than the state of Wyoming has right now. Now, Wyoming has been criticized by U.S. Fish and Wildlife in the past that the way they're maintaining their wolf populations and having the shoot on site policy in 85% of their state U.S. Fish and Wildlife criticized them and said that they were not being able to manage their wolves properly. However, in 2012, they did contradict themselves and U.S. Fish and Wildlife did give the state of Wyoming back their sovereignty to deal with their wolves how they wanted to and they were stripped of being federally protected. Now again, Wyoming is a state that is has Yellowstone in it and they are very, very cruel to their wolves. And so what this bill, bill again, HR 424 and bill S164 is going to do is take away, there you go, the protection of the gray wolf in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. This will be allowing unregulating killings of your wolf populations. So each state that has wolves, they do need to be maintaining a certain amount. This is going to allow what the Endangered Species Act says that they need to be having. It's going to allow them to go under that. This is a really critical time because, because of, due to them being unregulated and having people just be able to kill wolves as many as they can and not having necessarily a limit in some of these states, <laughs> what you're going to have is the very, very strong possibility that our timber wolves or gray wolves 
are going to get go extinct. This was happening before 1973 when the Endangered Species Act came out. We had less than 17 wolves in the United States. In 1974, because we had almost run these animals down to extinction, we put them on the Endangered Species Act thing to Richard Nixon. Now, to say that they are going to get stripped of this, they definitely deserve this because you do not have healthy wolf populations in any of your states. Even states that claim that their wolf populations are too large, not with their historical range. They only have 5% of their historical range, and historically we've had thousands, hundreds of thousands of wolves being able to roam here. Now, that's not necessarily realistic to have for our day and age, but it's definitely not healthy to keep only 100 wolves in a state that has one of our biggest national parks that we're extremely proud of. Now, wolves, we've mentioned before, have definitely shaped the way Yellowstone looks. You can watch how wolves change rivers on YouTube, very small four-minute video. So if you look at that and see what wolves are able to do for Yellowstone, that's in the state of Wyoming once again, and that's going to strip them. In Minnesota, Montana, and Michigan, you want Dakota? Do you want Dakota? There you go. Having unregulated killings, that's where most of your timber wolves are living as well, up in Idaho, Wyoming, and Montana, and then they're over on the Great Lakes area, Michigan, Wisconsin, and, Mon and Minnesota. So being able to strip it away from them, most of our wolf, again, timber wolves are living in these areas, so stripping away protection, you are having a very, very, unfortunately, strong chance of having to only be able to come see these guys in captivity. That is not our goal here at the Colorado Wolf and Wildlife Center. Our goal is to see Coda, not Coda herself, but Coda species out in the wild. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Coda. <laughs> see, Coda agrees. But to have her and her, uh, her species out in the wild roaming free and doing what wolves are supposed to do and that's be that those keystone predators for every single one of our states so in montana last year in 2016 that state sold six thousand wolf tags for only 19 dollars. a lot of your big cats your bears and your wolf tags are much much cheaper than your protein tags so of course they're very they sold very quickly very fast so again six thousand were sold that state only has 625 wolves each person so six thousand people could kill five wolves so you do the math, and of course you're allowing people, now that it's going to be potentially unregulated due to this wars on wolf act, they could eradicate the entire wolf population in these states because they are already having that chance last year. So if in 2017 these guys are stripped away in Montana, you might be saying goodbye to your Montana wolves. Michigan and Wisconsin are doing the same thing. Wisconsin is very, very pro not everyone, of course, but a lot of people in Wisconsin are very much pro wolf trophy hunting. Again, there's protein hunting and trophy hunting. Hi, Florida. These guys would just be a trophy. You wouldn't be utilizing that animal. So there are things that you can do. It's not over until it's over. We're going to continue fighting for Coda and her entire species until that bill is, unfortunately, if it gets there, on President Trump's. And even then, even though there's no judicial review, there's other things that we can do to fight. But let's stop this now. And what we're going to ask everyone to do, you do not have to be from one of, four of these four states. You can be from Colorado, Texas, Florida. It doesn't matter where you're from. What you can do is call your senators. What you're going to say to these senators is, Tell them the facts that you've learned today, that we definitely need wolves for our ecosystems, that we could potentially endanger these guys if we allow this bill to go through, and tell them, although I'm not in one of these four states, I stand with wolves and I'm fighting for wolves. Not only are we going to ask you to do a five to ten minute phone call, we're also going to ask you to sign petitions. Our Facebook page, which you're of course on right now, that is going to have petitions on there that you can sign through the Wolf Conservation Center and other websites. If not only that, you can search How to Stop the War on Wolves Act, and that's going to take you straight to a few petitions that we encourage you to sign all of them. Now, I know that it seems like, oh, having to call my senator, having to call both my senators seems like a lot. Honestly, five to ten minutes. A lot of these guys, you're going to be able to talk straight to their secretary and leave them a message. They will get that message. Having a vo voice phone call is going to be hard to ignore with all of your senators. So think about it. Five to ten for minutes saving potentially thousands of wolves. It's definitely worth it. If you call and you talk to a senator or you call to their secretary, we want you to comment below this video and say, hey, I did it. Called. Also signed petitions. And we ask all of you, hi, Coda, not just to like this video, to share it. We want to see as many likes as there are shares. That's going to reach out to your friends and your family. The time is now. We need to take action because, unfortunately, these guys are in a very, very desperate time. So just think about little Coda here in your wildlife, in your ecosystem. Be that positive change you want to see again. And it's not over till it's over. Let's fight until the very last minute for these guys. So this is Courtney and Coda.
coming from you for the Colorado Wolf and Wildlife Center. Thank you. And again, take action and tell us that you did that. We would love to see that. We love everyone that stands with wolves. So we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.